Hey YouTube, it's Julie. I am your Monday vlogger on Back to Basics WLS support channel. Um, this week's um, topic is about emotional eating. And I think we all can relate to it, or at least I think a good 98.9% .9 of us can. Um, I don't know of any person that I've met personally who has had a weight issue who is not emotionally eaten. In fact, I don't know anybody in the whole world. <laughs> I've, al I've always met somebody who's been an emotional eater. And while some people are able to control their emotional eating better than others, um, you know, my husband who doesn't have a weight issue emotionally eats. My daughter who um, doesn't have a weight issue um, emotionally eats, especially around her period. Um, so um, I think... All of us, all human beings, to some extent, use um, eating as a form of nurturing, as a form of um, uh, making ourselves feel better in certain moments of crisis. If you think about it, um, all our big um, ha events in our lives are surrounded with food. Um, weddings, funerals, um, graduations... Um, anything, anniversaries, you name it, baptisms, you name it, it's going to have food. Um, whether it's happy or sad, um, um, think, you know, I just think back to my college days and, uh, the way I stayed awake at night cramming for finals was eating and <laughs> drinking coffee. So, I mean, it, you know, even the most mundane kind of things, um, you know, in our lives, the, the normal things in our lives, <clears throat> uh, we are surrounded by food. Um, and um, we often, you know, you think about the holidays, you know, they all, you know, we've got specific foods and the favorite foods that you have to have for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or for Hanukkah, whatever it is that, that you celebrate as a family, those those things often have to deal with food. Um, and uh, so it's not surprising that for those of us who struggle with our weight, that emotional eating has taken on a whole new different kind of meaning for us. Um, that for some reason and somehow emotional eating has gotten the better of us and um, we are using it as a drug of sorts. And uh, I know there are going to be many of you that don't want to hear that, and uh, many of you that don't want to say, oh, no, it's not the same as alcohol, or it's not the same as gambling, or it's not the same as put any other kind of, you know, addiction in there. Um, but I would challenge you to say that, you know, if you took a really hard look at yourself um, and really considered the situations in which you are eating and you are responding emotionally to food or you're responding emotionally and therefore eating as a result of your emotions, um, I would bet, as my mom likes to say, dollars to donuts, that... Um, that a lot of us eat in much the same way that people who have um, a drinking problem um, drink or people who have a shopping problem shop or gambling problem gamble. Um, there's usually an emotional trigger and figuring out what your emotional trigger is the biggest thing. Um, because when you figure out your emotional trigger you can figure, you can at least say to yourself, okay, my emotional trigger is coming up. What am I going to do and how am I going to plan for it? Um, one of my big emotional triggers is getting done with the day. Um, I often work, you know, 10 to 12 hours as a teacher at school. And um, I get home around 5, 30, 6 o'clock and um, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Um, I don't want to be around anybody else because I've been around teenagers all day. 
And uh, even though I love them, you know, it's it's emotionally draining after a day. And um, all I want to do is just numb myself. I want to just be alone. And I want to be, just be. And um, the fastest way I feel I can numb myself is with food. I immediately think I need X food. And it's usually a sweet kind of food, usually sugary. Um, that's my drug of choice is sugar. Um, so that's, a, that's the big thing is that, you know, if we find ourselves wanting a specific type of food, that's not physical hunger. Um, I'm reading this book called Shrink Yourself um, by Robert Gould. He's a doctor and has been studying overeating and emotional eating for quite a while. And um, he, one thing that he says is physical hunger is not the same as emotional hunger. And the way you can tell the difference between the two is that if you want a specific type of food, cake, cookies, sugary stuff, ice cream, um, you know that that's emotional eating. Um, whereas if it's physical hunger, sometimes you don't even realize that you're hungry until you start eating. And you're like, oh, I'm hungrier than I thought I was. And I know that that's happened to you guys. I know that because it's happened to me. And then you're like, wow, I'm hungrier than I thought I was. And you start eating and you're like, wow, that feels really good. It feels good because it makes your stomach not hurt. Um, but you weren't wanting a specific type of food. Um, so um, the question is, and I've kind of gotten off topic, but the question is, is what revelations have you had in your journey before or after weight loss surgery that made you realize you were an emotional or stress eater? Um, revelations. The revelations that I, um, you know, I, I know when I eat. I eat um, due to stress. I eat due to fatigue. And I eat due to frustration. Um, I have a very low frustration threshold. And um, I often, when I'm tired and frustrated, I jump from frustration to anger almost immediately and um, and in order to pacify the anger I'll eat so I don't lash out at people um, not healthy in either instance lashing out or the eating but it is what it is I you know and as I've gotten older I've gotten better at controlling my anger and better at not lashing out but I have not gotten better at the not eating part um, I've always realized that I've been an emotional eater, I think since, I don't know, forever. Um, I've always used food as a means to pacify myself, to make myself feel good, to reward myself. My mom used to reward me with food if I had done well at something. Um, I still use food as a reward. Hey, end of the day. Hey, got my grades in. Hey, did this. Hey, I deserve it. I deserve something good. I've been a good girl. I'm going to eat. Yes, that's me. Um, so how do I cope with the triggers of emotions in relations to food? Right now what I'm trying to do is concentrate on knowing that I'm coming home from school. That's an emotional trigger. Um, what do I have planned as far as... I know that I need a snack. I do know that. Um, but I don't need a specific type of food. And I have always had go-to food. I think everybody kind of does when they have weight loss surgeries. They have a go-to food that is good for them, that satisfies them. And hopefully it's protein-based. Um, mine is low-fat mozzarella cheese. So um, my goal is to make sure that I go for the mozzarella cheese 
and kind of get some protein into my stomach. So my mouth is occupied, but I'm also eating good stuff. And I'm not feeding the emotional hunger. I'm just feeding the snack. And then I can move on. Um, trying to kind of fool my brain a little bit. Um, but that's my, my mini goal for dealing with my emotional triggers. Um, because I know I have them every day after work. Ah, it's every day. Um, other ways is, is looking and asking myself, are you eating, are you looking for a specific type of food? Are you looking for sugar or are you looking for salt? If you're looking for those things, you are not hungry. You are emotionally eating. Now, the trick then is, is to say to myself, okay, well, yeah, so I'm emotional eating, so what? Um, because that's what my head will say. I don't care, I still want to eat. Um, then the trick will be to figure out what to do with myself and maybe give myself an extra five minutes before I eat again and keep putting it off because oftentimes I will forget if I put it off. Um, and then whatever emotion I was dealing with at that time fades away, and so does my desire for the food. So that's my current plan to deal with <laughs> my emotional eating. I'm, I'm a very newbie at this, and um, as I said, I'm reading this book, Shrink Yourself by Dr. Gould, and it's kind of hard to go through because he's asking questions that frankly are uncomfortable to answer, and um, which is good. Uh, you know, because remember I said I like this stuff, but um, sometimes this stuff is hard to deal with, and the weight loss surgery is not everything. You know, you guys know that. You know the weight loss surgery is not everything. You know, 99% of it is right here, and um, we only got the 1% taken care of. This stuff is what's going to keep the weight off. So, um, yeah, it's uncomfortable, but small baby steps, right? How do you eat an elephant? <laughs> Pun intended. How do you eat an elephant? Bite by bite, right? And so if you're going to tackle a big issue like emotional eating, small steps, small steps, right? Okay, have a great week. Take care. Bye.